So we're going to talk about how we complete operations with uncertainty, and this is extremely important for um, your data test as well as any of your scientific reports. So as you go further through, like we've been pretty basic with our expectations surrounding uncertainty calculations up till now, and that's fine. You're not at the stage in your science career where you've really needed to do anything more, but the expectation starts to up itself now. So we've got two different ways of dealing with uncertainty depending on the operation that we're using. As we know in mathematics, addition and subtraction are linked together. So the rules that we apply for addition are the same as the rules that we apply for subtraction. And divide and multiplication have the same, same operations going on there. So with an addition or subtraction, we treat the numbers, the values out the front, we treat those the same way. So you add or subtract them as the question is asking. Have with the uncertainty, we always add them. Now we can do that with either the absolute or the percentage. So you can deal with absolute or percentage values, providing they've got the same unit, in addition and subtraction with uncertainty. Does that make sense? Now the reason we do that is we always assume worst case scenario. And I'll talk you through that. Let's say, this is my measurement. I've got 3.5 plus or minus 0.5 centimetres. What that means is the object that I've measured is 3.5 centimetres, around about. It could be 4, it could be 3. Correct? Yes. The second value is 3 centimetres long, plus or minus 0.5, which means it could be 2.5, it could be 3.5. Now, because we're scientists, we need to assume the worst case scenario. We need to account for all scenarios that could occur. So we could be in a situation where this thing is 2.5 centimetres plus 3 centimetres. They're the shortest lengths it could possibly be, correct? How big would that be? 2.5 plus 3? 5.5 centimetres. So we're saying it could be as small as 5.5. It could also be... 4 plus 3.5. What's 4 plus 3.5? 7.5. So the way that we show that is by saying we've just added the values together. 3.5, oh sorry, 3.5 plus 3, which is 6.5. And then we've added our uncertainties, which is saying the worst case scenario is it's out. They're both short by 0.5 or they're both long by 0.5 and that gives us 1 centimetre. Clear with that? And that's accounted for both scenarios. In the second example, what's the operation between them? So in the second example, how will we go about solving that? I want to give you five seconds now to think about that. We treat the numbers at the front the same, don't we? So Connor, what would I do to those? Sixteen plus one. Who agrees with Connor? Take one. take one. Why do we take one, not plus one? Because the science. Oh, that's because what it says. And the second bracket. What have I got? So I've got plus or minus. Now I'm dealing with my uncertainties. What do I have here? Zero point five plus zero point five. Very good. I'm adding them together because I'm assuming worst case scenario. Even though the operation was a subtraction. I add my uncertainties. Clear with that? That would give me 15.0 plus or minus 1 kilogram. Sweet. Let's talk about multiplying and dividing with uncertainty. I'll just fix this one up. So, why did you plus the second one? Why did I plus the second one? Maybe Connor could explain that. Have to the word. So, <laughs> if you were listening the entire time, Mason, you'd probably find that 16 plus or minus 0.5, what's the smallest that weight could be? And what about 1 plus or minus? 15. Because the operation between 6 and 1 is a subtraction. What's 16 minus 1? Okay. So the smallest that could be is? 
and the largest that could be 15.5 and this could be 1.5 couldn't it? Yeah. So what's 15 minus 1.5? Sorry, 15.5 minus 1.5. Oh, 15.5 minus 1.5. Okay, 0.5 minus 0.5. Let's do with the decimal column first. 0.5 minus 0.5. The answer is 14. Okay, the smallest it could be is 14, and the biggest it could be is if this was 16.5 and that was minus 0.5, and that would give us 16. So we're accounting for the best and worst scenario with one kilo uncertainty. The answer is 15 plus or minus one kilo. Cool. And we got that by adding our uncertainties. Lulu. Like, um, like, the then you'd have negative 15 plus or minus. Yeah. Plus or minus would still be one kilogram, but you just have a negative value. I don't know if they Nick, when I'm dealing with multiplication and division of uncertainty, what's the process? Um, What's yeah. different? So I multiply my values together, that's one difference. What else do I do? I have to convert all uncertainty, and I'm going to use a different coloured pen for this, because this is really important. I have to convert all uncertainty to percentage. They all must be represented as a percentage. So I need a relative uncertainty. And then what do I do after that? Thanks, Will. Um, what, do you say what do I do once I've got my percentages as uncertainties? So I'm at this stage here where I'm doing this sort of sum. I've got 15.5 centimetres plus or minus 3% times 21.5 plus or minus 2 percent. What do I do? Yep, and what do I do with the first, what do I do with the 15.5 and the 21.5? I multiply them, what about the percentages? I add them together. And again, regardless of whether this is a multiplication or a division, what do I do? I add my uncertainty, because we're assuming worst case scenario. Happy with that? Yeah. Adding and subtracting, I can deal with either absolute or percentage. With percentage, if they give me an absolute percentage, an absolute uncertainty, I must convert it to a percentage and then add them together. The crows love it, hopefully you do too. You're gonna complete these examples and then you're gonna move on to the sheet.